Get, get under there. That's okay. Okay. Before dozens of dog teams can hit the starting line, you ready to go, buddy? volunteers must first learn how to handle them. Let's go the front end here is attached with a neckline. <laughs> 50 people came out for the handling class at the Iditarod headquarters. Great job. Whoa. To practice with veteran Iditarod musher Wayne Curtis and his dog. Take off the leashes and fall away. We're at the starting line. Hi. You know, they've walked their dog and they think it's easy and they get out here and they fall and they slip in the snow and they go, wow, this is a lot harder than I thought, but boy, they're excited. And that's, that's, that's the whole part is getting them involved, volunteers, you know, hands on. If they can be, it's awesome. Forward. To make sure they're set for the start, each volunteer is assigned to a dog so the team doesn't get tangled. I think the dogs know more about what they're doing than I do, so knowing when to go, when to stop. Actually getting to walk up to the dogs and, and have a moment of interaction and then get going and looking back on the musher and, and following the hand signals, really cool. While practice makes perfect, there's no way to fully prepare them for the frenzy. They're kind of used to racing, but they're not used to being on 4th Avenue. They're a little... There's a lot of teams there. Everything needs to be controlled chaos. Finger Lake gets three, one case. Controlled chaos is also a good way to describe getting the food ready to fly out for the race. To make sure they get in the right place, like Shack Tulik gets certain things and Shagalock gets certain things. You can't mix them up. Squatna Yetna, Rhone, Gnome. There's a garlic bread and a cinnamon Danish. Dozen split up more than $20,000 worth of groceries needed to feed volunteers at checkpoints along the way. This is fun. People ask me when I'm going to quit. I said when I'm dead. Debbie Spikalski, or Debski as she's known to her Iditarod friends, put bread all over every side. Has been volunteering for almost 20 years and now cooks at McGrath and Nome during the race. She's getting a sneak peek of what she'll have to work with this year. They like homemade soups. So I try to put in, uh, have a pot of soup on as often as I can. Debski is one of about 2,000 volunteers needed for the race to go smoothly from start to finish. McGrath gets 22. Everyone has their own reason for helping out the last great race. The people, the volunteers, because they're so appreciative and happy to have somebody have something for them warm to eat when they're done with the shift. The dogs, the dogs, and then more dogs. I just love them. I've gotten to know mushers. I've learned how to mosh. The whole situation is just fun, bringing a lot of people together who would not have come together. Together, they get the preparations wrapped up to ensure everything is ready for race day. Heather Hinsey, CBS 11 News.